We have seen that the AMD RX 580 16GB doesn't make a whole lot of sense for gaming. But what about two of them? Last video there were a lot of comments about what the 16GB version of the RX 580 could be useful for, and while I don't agree with some of them, one comment mentioned time and time again was putting two of them in crossfire. Now on paper this makes sense. When you crossfire two cards together, you only get the memory of the smallest card, so in our case that would be 16GB. But we also get the power of two GPUs, technically, although it never actually works out that way. So here we have another RX 580 16GB, this time by Kinology. I tried hard and looked everywhere to find the Dicker Saver card again, but unfortunately it's now unavailable. So we now have a new card to test out. But hey, look on the bright side. This card has SLI and CUDA. On an AMD card apparently. Unlike the Dicker Saver card though, this card has one HDMI, one DVI and one DisplayPort. And it didn't come with the IO Shield bent already, so it's already better in my eyes. In the box we don't get much, just an instruction manual, the graphics card in an anti-static bag, and a small bag of screws. The graphics card itself feels more sturdy than the Dicker Saver card and is fully encased with this plastic housing. It has a 6 pin power connector which shows that it is indeed an RX 580 2048SP. The Kinology RX 580 2048 SP has 2048 stream processors, as given by the name. It has 16GB of GDDR5 micro memory, a clock speed of 1050MHz which seems very low, a memory bus of 256 bits giving us a bandwidth of 192GB per second, and also it has a TDP of 150 watts, so it's definitely not the most energy efficient card out there. Oh yeah, and the card was also released initially back in 2018, making it almost 7 years old, and yet somehow it is still one of the most popular AMD graphics cards available. So let's plug these cards into our system. We'll use our Kinology card as the main card in the X16 slot, and then we'll use our Dicker Saver card in the X8 slot. Plug in our power and the HDMI goes into our main card. Now we can start up our PC, download our drivers, and we can see we have two of our RX 580 16GB cards in the software. But wait, what's this? Activate Windows? Head on over to KeysFan using the link in the description and choose from a wide range of product keys, including Windows 11, Windows 10, Microsoft Office and much more. And then use the code GPU50 at checkout to get 50% off Windows, or GPU62 to get 62% off Microsoft Office. It's super simple and easy to order. Click Add to Cart, add your coupon in, and then check out with PayPal or a credit card. Now we can go into our settings and activate our version of Windows. Thanks to Keys fans for sponsoring this video. When we want to turn on Crossfire, we just set it to our chosen Crossfire mode in the settings of each game inside the AMD software. Then we can launch 3D Mark Time Spy, which has very good Crossfire support. And here we can see we get a score of 7083 with our graphics score of 6584, and that's for our dual 580 16GB. If we compare that to a single RX 580 8GB card, we only got 4388 with a graphics score of 3944, so it looks very promising. The only thing is, at no point was the two graphics cards using over 8GB of VRAM, so it's very likely we'd get a similar score with just two 8GB 580s. And then it pretty much went downhill from here. Although GTA 5 is supposed to be compatible with Crossfire, it didn't seem to be working properly. Our GPU 1, as shown in the top left here, only sometimes actually starts working. Most of the time it just felt like it was sitting there at 0% usage at idle. And the FPS pretty much reflects this. Our Crossfire setup got 21.8 FPS on average at the max settings 1080p MSAA x 8 and we have all that extra fancy graphics, advanced graphics stuff turned on to the max as well. There's also a good amount of micro stuttering, which is a known problem with Crossfire setups as shown by the 1% and 0.1% lows being at 16 and 12 FPS respectively. In this setup, we didn't actually use any more than about 6GB of VRAM. If we compare that to a single 16GB 580, we see that the results are pretty similar. In fact, the single 16GB cards perform better with 22.4 FPS on average and a 1% and 0.1% low of 17.3 and 17.2 FPS respectively. And even worse for a Crossfire setup is that the 8GB 580 got 27.7 FPS on average, which is higher, and it got much better lows. Now there is a reason for this, and that is that the 8GB card I have is actually clocked faster than the 16GB cards. But I guess it goes to show that having extra VRAM doesn't necessarily mean extra performance. 
Finally, the last comparison is an RTX 3050 6GB card, and I chose this because it costs about the same of these two RX 580 16GB cards together, and that did the best at 40.1 FPS on average with very minimal stuttering. Now the 16GB cards haven't actually yet used their full potential, because the game isn't using more than 8GB of VRAM. So let's turn up the game to 4K and see what happens. Now we have the same settings but at 4K this time. And we can see that the FPS is pretty bad with just 7.4 FPS on average with our crossfire setups. The 1% and 0.1% lows weren't any better at 4.6 and 4.2 FPS respectively. We were however using about 9GB of VRAM, so there is that. The single 16GB card was also about the same at 7.2 FPS, but it did have slightly higher 1% and 0.1% lows at 5.5 and 5.4 FPS. Although our 8GB card was using the max VRAM at 8GB, it still got a massive 9 FPS. So here the results are more close, although the 8GB card is still slightly higher in FPS. I guess the 8GB card was probably running out of memory, which is why the result is much closer here, even though the clock speed of the 8GB card is higher. What's more interesting is that the RTX 3050 6GB card went from the best of the cards to the worst at just 5.3 FPS which really shows that 6GB is not enough video memory. I reckon if the 16GB cards were clocked at the same speed as the 8GB card, it would definitely have a much higher FPS than the 8GB card. The crossfire setups here though don't make any sense because there's no improvement over the single 16GB card. There were a lot of games that didn't work with crossfire. Most newer games start up fine but only actually use one GPU. Red Dead Redemption 2, Crisis 3, Flight Sim, Resident Evil 3 and 7 all started up fine but when you were in game they only actually used a single GPU while the other stayed at 0% usage. So we'll skip past those games. Additionally, some games like F1 2015 and Euro Truck Simulator 2 worked with Crossfire but gave awful graphical glitches making it virtually unplayable. Fallout 3 actually worked quite well but was capped at 60 FPS for some reason and it didn't go over 6GB of video memory so it didn't really tell us anything at all. However, Fallout 4 on the other hand worked if you set the Crossfire mode to 1x1 one sometimes. It was using about 6GB of video memory, so in order to get some more VRAM usage, I installed a HD texture mod. So Fallout 4 at 4K ultra settings with the HD mod installed gave us 23.8 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 16.2 and a 0.1% low of 9.9 FPS. We also had a bunch of graphical glitches, but at least we were using 9GB of VRAM. A single 16GB card got 23.2 FPS on average, and better lows at 20.7 and 19.4 FPS. The 8GB 580 with a higher clock speed again did better at 27.3 FPS, while the RTX 3050 achieved a similar result to the 8GB card at 27.0 FPS. Eurotruck Simulator 2 worked for Crossfire but had some major graphical glitches. Here the Crossfire setup actually made the FPS worse on average, as our two 16GB 580s got 29.4 FPS, whereas the single 16GB 580 got 34.1 FPS. Our faster 8GB cards got 40.9 FPS, and the 3050 got over 60 FPS, which makes sense as this game is not heavy on the video memory. So it's looking like Crossfire is pretty bad and that all is lost for it. However, Shadow of the Tomb Raider turned out to be the best game for a Crossfire setup. Not only did Crossfire actually work, but we actually got a decent improvement in FPS. At 1080p, highest settings, our Crossfire setup got 89.9 FPS on average. There was a lot of micro stuttering as shown by our 1% and 0.1% lows being at 36.9 and 28.7 FPS respectively. But that's still a really good result. Using just a single 16GB card we just got 51 FPS on average, so that's a big drop of over 30 FPS. Our faster 8GB card also couldn't keep up with our crossfire setup with just 63.9 FPS on average, and the 3050 was close, but not close enough at 74.2 FPS on average. These results become even more noticeable when we turn the game up to 4K. Now our crossfire setup gets 34.4 FPS on average with fairly bad percent lows at 19.8 and 16 FPS, but it does use 9GB of memory as well. Our single 16GB card gets just 17.9 FPS, while our single 8GB card could only achieve 21.7 FPS, and the 3050 with its low 6GB of video memory could only get 24.5 FPS. So it actually seems like 2, 3 or 4 16GB RX 580s in Crossfire can make sense. It just sucks that games no longer support Crossfire, and neither does AMD. 
The next most commented thing was using this GPU for AI. And that makes sense as running AI models locally can use a lot of VRAM in things like stable diffusion. The only real problem is that a lot of AI stuff runs much better on Nvidia compared to AMD. So after eventually getting stable diffusion working with WebUI and DirectML, we can see that on a single RX 580 GPU with 16 gigabytes of VRAM and stable diffusion 1.5, it takes 50.4 seconds to generate an image using this prompt. It runs at about 2.4 seconds per iteration. And then to generate 10 images, it takes 8 minutes, 19.2 seconds. So is that good? I don't really know. So let's compare it to the 8GB card that's slightly clocked faster. And that completed an image in less time at 45.6 seconds at about 2.13 seconds per iteration. And then it only took 7 minutes, 29.1 seconds to generate 10 images. Okay, so the faster speed 8GB card did better, but that's in the smaller 1.5 model. So what about Stable Diffusion XL? Here the results were very, very close. In the single image, the 16GB card did slightly better at 1 minute 25.7 seconds at around 4.19 seconds per iteration. And that's compared to 1 minute 26 seconds for the 8GB card. We were getting about 3.68 seconds per iteration, which is better than the 16GB card. However, the 8GB card actually runs out of VRAM here, unless you set it to medium VRAM in the arguments. So I think the 16GB card is actually not too bad here. When comparing it to the RTX 3050, we can see that the 3050 can do stable diffusion 1.5 very, very quickly in less than 10 seconds. But in XL, the results were surprisingly almost the same as the 580 cards, at 1 minute 11.1 seconds to generate an image. So considering that you can pretty much get two of these 16GB cards for the same price as the RTX 3050, the RX 580 16GB actually looks like a viable option for AI. But the problem is that these are old AMD cards. AMD is not very well supported with AI applications, and especially not these older AMD cards like 500 series. Trying to run Olama and DeepSeek just ends up using your CPU because the GPU is not actually supported, and it becomes pretty difficult to try and get it running as the RX 500 series are not officially supported by ROCKM. I tried running Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large with Comfy UI, but it kept saying that there is not enough video memory available. And putting in the low VRAM argument fixed the problem but gave awful performance of about 40 minutes to generate an image. To put that into perspective, the RTX 3050 completed it in just 6 minutes. So there's definitely something not right about my install of Comfy UI. The final comments that were mentioned a lot were that mining should be done on the 16GB card. Back in the day, the RX 580 was actually a very popular card for mining and also quite profitable as well. But nowadays, with much more powerful hardware out there, you're going to be looking at like 10 cents a day according to the calculators. And that's not even including the power costs. The only real benefit of the 16GB card as far as I can see is being able to mine coins with a large DAG size. But since the performance of the RX 580 is not great anyway, you won't be making very much. So you have to consider the fact that these cards draw way more power than the newer, more efficient cards. Here we can see two of our RX 580s in Crossfire are using around 350 watts of power at load whereas a single RTX 3050 is using just 150 watts of power, bearing in mind that we also have our motherboard, CPU and other stuff using power in both instances. The only way I can actually see to make money using an RX 580 is if you had free power, which some people do have to be fair. Overall, these tests have shown that the 16 GB RX 580 does have some use cases. For gaming, it doesn't really make sense as a single card isn't powerful enough to use 16GB of VRAM, and AMD Crossfire just doesn't really work most of the time. But when it does work, it actually seems to be very good for performance. So unless you want to be playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider all the time or spending a load of time finding compatible games, I would probably just get a single, more powerful GPU. For AI, it actually works fairly decently for its price. The only thing is that support is very limited as it's an AMD card and an old card and older cards are not supported by ROCKM. So if you do choose this card for AI, be prepared to jump through loads of hoops to try and get anything to work correctly. Thanks for watching.